So to summarize, here is the uh, unencoded bit, the encoded bit. Uh, so this would be the implementation, if you will, of trellis coded modulation. And this would be the encoding trellis. And now what I'd like to do is look at performance. How am I going to say how well this code does? In order to see how well it does, I'm going to have to calculate the minimum distance. So to calculate the minimum distance, I'm going to uh, consider what was happening with no coding and what happens when I go to coding it. And if I'm going to do that comparison, I, I really should go to signal space. I really should go to signal space and put all of this in terms of ES. But if I do that, when we do the numerical example, we're all going to get like our heads screwed up because it's like really hard to follow the math. It's simple math, but the numbers, when they're round numbers, is a lot easier. So I'm going to do a little trick this time. I'm not going to really do the correct way of, of uh, doing this analysis and going all the way back to ES. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this easy coordinates. I'm just going to work always in IQ space with these easy coordinates. But since I want to compare coded 8 PAM, uncoded 4 PAM, if I want to compare them, I have to at least not cheat about the average energy per symbol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to renormalize the 4 PAM. I'm going to renormalize them so that at least these two IQ, uh, IQ spaces, or I spaces, these two spaces at least are self-consistent. Okay, I haven't normalized them to um, the energy per symbol, which would be the way I could compare them across any uh, modulation format. But for this example, I'm going to cheat. And so what I have done here is I've given you some new coordinates in 4 PAM. So they're not the easy coordinates, but I am going to keep the easy coordinates in 8 PAM. So if I take these coordinates, how did I end up with these numbers here? How did I get those? Because if I do the average energy per symbol, so I add up the energy for 1, the energy for 3, 5, etc., I get 168. There's 8 of them, so the average energy comes to 21. And when I use these coordinates in 4 PAM, voila, I get the same average energy per symbol. So those two are the same. So when I'm comparing distances, I'm going to be comparing them between here and here. Now, for uncoded, the minimum distance is quite clear. <laughs> it's the difference between minus 6.15 and minus 205, or between 205 and minus 205, 205, it's 4.1. So the distance, the minimal distance, uncoded, quite clear. What's the minimal distance when it's coded? Well, it's got this encoding system with it, so I have to calculate the free distance and the decoder in order to be able to compare the performance of these two codes, of these two approaches. QPSK, no modulation, uh, excuse me, no coding, and uh, TCM uh, with 8 PAM. Oh, one thing before we leave. Uh, you'll notice that in this choice, I have made a good gray coded correspondence. Uh, but of course, uh, for the TELUS coded modulation, it will not be a gray code. So this will be the gray code here. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to um, uh, use it. But here, just to uh, highlight that if I used no coding, I would use a gray code. And if I used TCM, I would use the correspondence that comes from the set partitioning. So I've taken our convolutional encoder that we've seen before, and I've produced here the trellis. And we're going to be using this trellis to find the free distance. And in order to do that, um, I'm going to uh, have to modify this, right? Because each one of these um, should really have another bit, uh, another bit to it, the uncoded bit. These are the two coded bits, and I should add a first bit. Now remember, I'm looking for the minimal distance. If I put these two bits different, like the first bit 0 here and the second bit 1 here, well, they're going to be farther apart, right? Because I chose them so that the 0 and the 1, uh, you know, that's you know, minus 7 and 1. They're 8 apart. Uh, so that's going to be far. When, when I want to find the minimum distance, then I'm going to say that that first bit is the same, OK? So that the, uh, 
that's going to give me um, my, my more difficult case. And I'm looking for the most difficult case. I'm looking at all the paths. I'm looking for the one that's closest, that where the most errors will occur, and that's the minimum distance. So in this case, I'm going to add another bit before all of them. I could have made them, you know, anything as long as they were both the same in the same time uh, sequence. But just to make things a little easier, I'm just going to make them always as if they were the zero one. If I always made them the one, I'd get the same calculation. If I made them, you know, this is zero, this first bit of one, it would all come to the same calculation. So this just makes it easier. So now I have written up here what is the total bit sequence uh, that I'm going to examine. And I want to calculate the path, uh, the branch metrics for each time interval and the path metric for the whole thing. In order to do that, I have to know what are the coordinates in the I space. And then I will use Euclidean distance to calculate these metrics. So if I look at the sequences, you know, it's in blue, the, the zero states are all zeros. And now this path that I'm examining, and I, I should examine all of them to find out which one is the shortest one, but let's start with just this one example. And uh, so the, the coded sequence was 1, 1, and now I've added the zero to it. So I've got 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And so now my task is to calculate the distance between these two sequences. And these two sequences, have their distance is determined by the Euclidean distance. So let's go through the exercise. How do I calculate a Euclidean distance? So I'll start that by uh, looking at what is the uh, coordinate associated with each one of these sequences. So if I look at the 0, 0, 0, that's always going to be uh, amplitude 7. So I can um, make that association, that's easy. The 0, 1, 1, well that's got coefficient of 3, and the 0, 1, 0, that's coefficient of 5. So I know I'm going to be working with basically amplitude 3, 5, and 7 for all of this calculation. So I write up now uh, across the top, this was the 0, 0, 0, and this is now coordinate 7, coordinate 7, coordinate 7, IQ space, but of course it's only I because we're looking at PAM, not QAM. And then the other one was uh, 3, and then 5, and then we had 3 again. So these are the um, coefficients in the IQ plane, and we're going to calculate the Euclidean distance based on uh, these locations. So we'll start uh, in this interval. What is the distance between 7 and 3? Of course, they're 4 apart. In this interval, the difference between them uh, is 7 and 5. That's 2. And in this branch, the, dif the distance between them is 4. And if I want to get the path metric, the Euclidean distance, well, in that case, I have to take um, the square of the Euclidean distance is equal to the sum of the squares of the distances. And so we get this equation. And I get um, 4 squared plus 2 squared plus 4 squared. And that all comes out to 36. So that's the square of the free distance. So I know that the free distance for this path is 6. So I'm not going to go through all the other paths. But for this code, this ends up being, yes, this is the, the path with the minimal distance. And the minimal distance is indeed uh, 6 for this uh, TC, a trellis coded modulation. So now I can calculate the gain. What have I gained <laughs> in using trellis coded modulation? And remember, I'm going to use this good normalization. So the gain in NDB would be 10 long 10. And it would be, you know, I used to be at this uh, quam with no modulation separation. And now I'm at this separation, um, which is. Um, with the increase because of the, the trellis having increased this distance. And so um, I can't remember why, but the gain has the square of the distances. And uh, in this case, it would be 36 over 4.1 uh, squared, and that comes out to 3.3 dB. So we have 3 dB gain in giving the complexity of having a trellis decoder uh, and a four-state trellis decoder. Uh, I get this, this gain in exchange with no expansion in bandwidth. 
Now, just be careful, because if you had not done the renormalization, if you had just gone and, you know, not gone back to signal space, which is always, you know, the safest bet, but if you had just used IQ coordinates, then the uh, average energy symbol would not have been the same in the two, and you would have been comparing apples and oranges. So uh, I sort of uh, went through a shortcut here so that we could have nice round numbers, 7 minus 5, 7 minus 3. Things are easier to calculate. Uh, but of course, you know, and if you always go to signal space with the parameterization with the average energy per symbol, you know, you'll always have the good normalization. Here we had to be a little careful. So this is a summary of typical coding gain that you can see with trellis coded modulation. Uh, this is various uh, constraint lengths, and of course the constraint length determines uh, the number of straights in the trellis, so 2 to the k minus 1. And this is the gain that you can get uh, with uh, a very good uh, error correcting codes. And so uh, you can see the trade-off. Um, as you go up in constraint uh, length, um, which, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a complexity trade-off.